this year uh, we have uh, cleaned our lines with calcium hypochlorite. Uh, in an earlier vid video, we showed uh, cleaning lines with water. Uh, we found that cleaning lines with water was not sufficient. Uh, it certainly helps, but it doesn't do enough. Uh, we find that there is an issue with 3 16 tubing in uh, the uh, set, the sap starts out flowing really well at the beginning of the season, but towards the end of the season it dwindles in production uh, quite drastically. Uh, this would happen with 5 16 tubing too, or does happen with 5 16 tubing, tubing too. But uh, they have found that by replacing spouts, or even better still, replacing spouts and drops, uh, you can uh, alleviate this and you get strong production all through the season. This, uh, these replacement techniques, we've tried them on 3 16 tubing and it does not help. Uh, we've tried check valves on 3 16 tubing and that does not help. Uh, so we know we have a problem and we think sanitation is the issue. Uh, now, when I say this, we have not gone through a season after cleaning, and we can't really see the results. Uh, I'll describe our experiences here this year. Uh, this tubing has been used for five plus years. Uh, we have 2,300 taps here. Uh, we uh, put in about half uh, of our spouts and check valve spouts, new check valve spouts here, new stubbies. Uh, and we, we started out, I guess we tapped the end of January. And uh, first flows were really, really, really good. Uh, we had one line we put in completely brand new. Uh, so uh, after the first flows, uh, we ended up selling sap during the first flows. We couldn't possibly boil everything we produced. Uh, then it froze for a while, and then it came back. And it came back okay, and then it started to dwindle. And uh, the end of the season was pretty miserable. We were, uh, so in some days we made five gallons of syrup a day. Uh, in the meantime, um, I compare myself with my neighbors with 5 sixteenths, uh, who do good, fairly good practice, and uh, their, and their end of season was pretty good. They were still flowing strong. I had one line that was brand new, as I said, and at the end of the season, that was flowing strong, showed a high vacuum of, I believe it was 26 inches, uh, it was doing beautifully, and the other 99 uh, lines were doing really poor or basically zero. Uh, so obviously new tubing uh, has an effect and we hope that sanitation can bring the tubings back to new tubing. Uh, we have a very little information to go on. We had some ex experience, uh, uh, experiments done by Steve Childs down at Cornell and he found that he uh, could use bleach at 400 parts per million. He used household bleach. Uh, and he, he brought in drops uh, from the woods and cleaned the drops uh, in the sugar house. And he found that those drops could be reused and they were just as good as uh, brand new drops. Uh, I don't like the idea of using household bleach. Uh, I, we used it extensively in the 70s, and we found that the household bleach uh, is, is sodium hypochlorite, and the sodium and the chlorine, of course, are, are uh, give you uh, essentially table salt when they finish reacting. And the squirrels love that salt solution. And so they just would just chew on our lines like crazy. So old sugar makers will stay away from this bird at UVM. And Abby said, well, we, were, we used uh, 
calcium hypochlorite, and of course that does not turn into table salt when it's done. The calcium is essentially gives you a lime water solution after it uh, dissipates. And uh, we, we found that the squirrels don't particularly care for it. In fact, in fact it's sort of bitter tasting and I think they uh, are put off by it. So uh, taking Abby's word for it, and Abby at, at UVM they found the same sort of thing. If you put, uh, made a solution of 400 parts per million, brought stuff in from the woods, and soaked it for half an hour in the solution, it would uh, kill bacteria, and, and things would work pretty much like new tubing. So we said, well, maybe we can apply it to our whole system. So Abby said we used, uh, they used an industrial uh, food grade uh, hypochlorite, so a calcium hypochlorite called Indochlor. So I went and uh, called up the company that makes Indochlor and I talked to a gentleman there named Tom Scherf and he said, oh, we package this stuff in small quantities as uh, swimming pool bleach and we package it under the brand name of Zappet. Okay, now you really, Indochlor comes in uh, large quantities like 100 pound lots. Uh, you really don't want to have uh, large quantities of this hanging around. Uh, if it gets a, just a little bit of water in it, not enough to mix it up, it's very reactive and it can actually cause fires. So you really want small quantities. And since this stuff is used in swimming pools, you have small quantities, and it's in convenient one-pound bags. If you uh, mix one pound of this with 200 gallons of water, you get 400 parts per million solution. Now, normally they'd mix one pound, for a swimming pool, they'd mix one pound with like 10,000 gallons of water, so you're getting a much stronger solution than the swimming pool uses. Uh, but it, it works well, and it's the same material as uh, Abby was using. I called uh, around to, to at least one other manufacturer of uh, swimming pool uh, chlorine, uh, hypochlorite, but they would not really not tell me what the ingredients were. They, you know, they had it, some of their own proprietary materials, and I wasn't quite sure what it was. So I decided to do this. Uh, it's available, I think, from one place in the area. There's a swimming pool place in Plattsburgh that has it. That's a little too far to go. So we, we ordered it on the internet, uh, a place called Spa Dad Daddy. And they sent us uh, six bags of it for, I believe it was 35, 40 bucks. So uh, you only need about three bags to do my whole system. Uh, so we're fine. Uh, so we, you're going to see in the in the sequence that we show you, we, we show you us weighing it out uh, because we're going to use uh, half pound per hundred gallons. We found that mixing it up into uh, 200 pound, 200 gallon batches worked really well. Um, and uh, you, we have a little sequence there where we filter it through a T-shirt. Uh, and this is to keep any large uh, lunks out of the system. We didn't find that much of a problem, but this was uh, at the advice of an old swimming pool expert. And uh, so it's not hard to do. You could just mix the whole thing directly though. Uh, okay, now the other, the other mixture that we did is uh, one uh, eighth teaspoon per one liter or one quart. A liter is slightly more than a quart. And we use this to clean the drops. And this is what we use. This is a Nalgene wash bottle. Uh, we got this from US Plastics. Uh, and uh, notice we've taped the spout on because we found 
that they uh, come off and then you lose them in the woods and you never find them again. Uh, so you can fill this up with, uh, with uh, water and then put one eighth teaspoon, we use stainless steel spoon. So, uh, I guess my daughter got them at uh, Bed Bath and & Beyond. And uh, what happens here is a drop. Uh, this uh, nozzle just fits right down to the drop really well. And you just squeeze it and it fills the drop up and it will actually push it down into the main line from here, uh, clean, cleaning everything out. So those are the two, mi two mixtures. This is the, this, this is the substance. Uh, this is equivalent to a food grade, uh, exactly the same as the, f the food grade uh, stuff called Indochlor that uh, the dairy industry uses pretty extensively, I guess. And uh, we're, we were very satisfied with it. You're going to see us with gloves and goggles. And uh, I, I think when you're mixing stuff down at the tank, you want to do that. We found in the woods, uh, we would spill some on our hands and uh, on our clothes. And it really wouldn't cause much grief. Uh, our clothes weren't. Uh, bleached from it and uh, so it's a lot easier we were we had a little bit of fear and trepidation about this material when we first started and I certainly you should be careful with it but it was uh, a lot more forgiving than we thought it would be certainly you do not want it in your eyes uh, so this uh, we do not again we have not gone through a season with this uh, we're just going on the very little information, scientific information we have. We're going to trust uh, Abby and Steve uh, in their experiments and hope that we can uh, expand, uh, have had expanded that successfully to the bush. Uh, visually, when we look at the lines after, everything looks cl clear. There's uh, uh, occasional little piece of yeast caught here and there, but we don't think that's significant. And occasionally you'll see a little bit of scum on the lines that doesn't seem to come off. We don't, hopefully that's not significant either. Uh, but basically it looks clean. Uh, we've certainly got a lot, of, a lot of yeast out of our main lines that have been built up for years. Uh, we think that this, pro this was worth doing. Uh, but how successful it will be, we won't be able to tell you till uh, the end of next April. Uh, so if you want to try it, this is the best we can do right now. Uh, and this, 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 uh, this should be fine. Uh, now, in the, in the previous video, we showed you how to do this with water. Our rinse cycle is done with water, and our water, uh, we have a compressor, which we blow air into the line, and the water is just the uh, pressure uh, from the spring down in the sugar house. And we said before, the pressure from the spring down in the sugar house is about 50 PSI. The advantage of the air-water mixture is it's lighter than water, and we can push uh, the uh, mixture up past the spring up to the top of our sugar bush. Uh, it's probably uh, 200 feet from the uh, where we start to the top of the sugar bush, so it's a pretty good head. Uh, the pump we're using will uh, easily go up to 100 psi. Uh, it, you got to be careful with it. Uh, you don't want you want to have quite a few. Uh, laterals connected to it uh, and uh, a smaller pump might even be better uh, but it, it, it has to, uh, the piston pump is a high head pump and it works pretty well for this system uh, certainly other pumps would work we just happen to have one because we use that this pump go piston pump uh, uh, for our uh, 
our, uh, diab our, our, our uh, syrup filter. And uh, so it had, we, it's a double purpose. We're going to uh, clean our lines now with uh, a bleach solution. This bleach, bleach solution is not household bleach, but is uh, calcium hypochlorite. It's used in industrial and, and food, food operations. It's also used in swimming pool uh, cleaning. It's, uh, the advantage of this is that it's based on calcium, not sodium. So the end product will be lime, not salt. If you uh, have a long time experience like I have, you know that uh, when you put bleach in the lines like we did in the 70s, uh, you get salt and then you get squirrels. This is the apparatus that we've shown before in another video. We described this accurately. This mixes the air with the water. Uh, this is uh, my main lines coming down. This would pump the stuff up into the main lines. We have these uh, hydron chlorine indicators uh, and this will go up to 200 parts per million. Uh, it's jet black at 200 parts per, per million. That's probably good enough to indicate that we got chlorine. We're going to go up to 400 parts per million here. Uh, the chlorine solution after a week or so in our lines uh, is pretty much pretty much dissipated. Uh, ultraviolet light kills it. Uh, that that comes into our translucent lines and does it in. Also, any organic material in there will kill it. And so it's it's not an everlasting system, uh, everlasting thing. But in your main lines, which don't allow uh, ultraviolet light in, they're dark. Uh, it might persist for quite a bit longer. So you probably have to drain and rinse those. We're going to try to rinse everything. Uh, it's very easy to rinse the main lines and it's very easy, easy to rinse the laterals. It's harder to uh, deal with the uh, drops. The other substance we've got here is uh, a dechlorination solution. So if we end up with stuff in the tank we get, want, want to get rid of, or if we drain stuff back from our lines into a tank and it still has bleach in it, we don't want to dump it on the ground. So we add a little bit of this until we get a reading of, uh, no reading on our paper here. Uh, so <clears throat> none of this is terribly expensive. It's all available. You really should have it. The other thing we have out here, safety goggles. We have gloves, okay, you, you always have to add this bleach to water. Now uh, we're going to do this, mix it up in a small quantity of water. This is an old t-shirt and bailing twine.
These are quite ancient drops uh, we had left over from oh, a few years back. And uh, we're, now think, we're now thinking about putting 5 sixteenths drops on 3 sixteenths tubings. We may think that might alleviate some of our problems. This is a simply thin walled PVC pipe with a cap on it. Very cheap. I happen to have the pipe hanging around. Even cheaper and I had to buy the cap. So not a lot of money invested but it's long so that when you push these down these things don't float. They're a high density PE and uh, they will stay down there. Put them in there for half hour. That's long enough to uh, kill everything according to Steve Childs and uh, we'll take his word for it. Now we use the highly scientific technological method of a bucket to do this. This, this uh, pipe carries about six or seven gallons. Now, we just push them in and this uh, liquid flows right right up into it. Uh, we'll later do a rinsing operation. Uh, just this with plain water. We don't like these check valves, uh, I want to say, but there's a few places where we're going to use them again. Uh, the 3 16 check valves and these uh, two-piece spouts for 3 16 with check valves, you can't get the spouts off the uh, adapters. Uh, so they haven't worked. We spent a lot of money on them, but there's a few places where we use them. So I don't want to buy any more. So again, going after Steve Childs, we're going to bleach them. And we have this stainless steel basket. Some of them will float, but they'll sink. And this will clean them. And uh, I think we'll be all right. With uh, 316, especially with DNG tubing, is you can take these, the uh, fittings and put them in, just boil them for a minute. And while they're still hot, you can remove easily remove the uh, DNG tubing from the fittings and you can reuse them and the vacuum is fine. So we intend to do that with a bunch of spouts that we've already put through the bleach process here. Uh, that way we won't be wasting as much, that way we won't be buying as much. Note that the pump is lower than the tank and this is because we can have the pump uh, flooded. I'll open the valve. It's a lot easier to prime a plug when it's a uh, pump when it's flooded. Uh, I'm gonna re I'm gonna make sure I got liquid. And I think we'll call that good. So you see the uh, paper getting black. This tells us we have chlorine. So this uh, spout is full. That's done. And I can walk up this line. All right, we found uh, a, we, we get 99% of uh, our washing from washing below. But we leave 1% out and that's cleaning the drops. We can clean the drops from washing below uh, but it's more complicated. It's much simpler to uh, clean the drops individually. So what we have is these, these are wash bottles. Uh, they're available from U.S. Plastics. They're Nalgene wash bottles and they're one liter wash bottles. So if we fill them up to there, we have one liter of water in them, which we will do. And uh, you, can, you, can also, you can also uh, if you're out in the woods, you can obviously carry a, a gallon of water with you to make your refills. Uh, 
theoretically, one liter should do about 175 drops. In reality, it doesn't. We overfill them and some goes down the line, some spills. So we might get 50 for 60. I take uh, one eighth teaspoon. Level it off. Put it in there. Put it in there. You don't want to mix water with this dry stuff. Could be very bad. Stir it up really good so we mix it. We have the scientific white pine stirring rod from a tree that grew here. And we like to see most of it in solution. You might find a few particles down there. Now, put this in a pocket and clean uh, with uh, the solution by blowing it up from down below. Uh, we are going to uh, just clean the, clean the drops. Uh, these stick on a little too well. Uh, generally, you wouldn't have to uh, change spouts if this works the way it's supposed to work because this stuff should clean the spouts too. Uh, we weren't satisfied with the spouts we used. Uh, these were either two-piece two spouts or they were uh, polycarbonate spouts. Uh, we found the two-piece spouts were completely unsatisfactory and the polycarbonate spouts uh, would tend to get brittle after the first year. So we're replacing these with, uh, these are D and G black plastic spouts. We like them very much. There must be other spouts that will work just as well. We can leave this in our pocket. We want to bring the, the line to be about the same level. The idea is to fill and uh, have it fill up. If you have it like this, it'll tend to empty out. And, and the idea is we need to have contact of the solution with the line as far as possible. Now, you can't get this completely filled up, but, you get, but everything is wetted with the solution, and I think that has to be good enough. So you just put it on here and press it in. And you can see, I don't know if you can see it going on the picture, but it's flowing down the tube and down this, and it's pretty much felt full. Some will spill out. All right, it's important to be able to do this efficiently. Uh, this year we did it after the season was closed, uh, and uh, it was pretty much a learning curve for us. Uh, but this is what, this is a schedule that uh, if this proves successful, remember we haven't seen it go through a season yet. If this proves successful and increases our yield next year, this is how we'll do it. Uh, after the season's over, uh, we'll run up and take the uh, last, uh, the end, uh, the end drop, uh, detap the end drop so that uh, liquid can flow all the way up the laterals easily, all the end drops. Uh, and then we will start by uh, putting the uh, endochlor solution in the uh, main lines and laterals, uh, just pump it up and uh, 
clean everything out really well. Then we will detap, and as we detap, we will take our uh, Nalgene wash bottles and uh, clean clean the, uh, the and clean the drops. Uh, then at the end of the summer, uh, we will go up and wash the laterals and and the main lines like we did before. Uh, this way we will not spend a lot of extra time in the woods. Every time you make a tree visit, you know, we love our trees and we want to hug them, of course, but every time you make a tree visit it takes time. And if you've got thousands of tree visits to make, you're going to spend considerable time doing it. So you don't want to make too many. So doing them when you detap uh, seems to be a logical way of doing it. And uh, this cleaning can be done without uh, a great deal of effort. Um, it's handy to have uh, more than one person, one person down at the pump station pumping and uh, another person or two pe pe uh, people up in the woods uh, seeing what's going on in the end taps. Walkie-talkies are mighty useful. Uh, Walkie-talkies are somewhat limited in range, so you may need to have a person, an intermediate person, if you've got a long way to go. Uh, uh, getting relaying messages to you so you can find out what's happening. The object, of course, when you when you uh, first put the solution in the line, is to get uh, the solution up to the end of the line, and you do that by reading it with that uh, high bound paper we were talking about. Once you see that black, that line's okay. Uh, the advantage of doing it in the beginning, at the end of the season. Uh, Every, the uh, system should be pretty well intact. You shouldn't have uh, leaks anywhere. Uh, this is probably as good as it's going to be. So you won't spend time running around looking for things. The advantage of rinsing at the end of the summer, or at the beginning of the fall, is that uh, some of the uh, damage, maybe squirrel damage, deer damage, whatever damage you're going to have in the, in the lines has occurred. Uh, and you'll be able to uh, go through, use that same time to go through to correct those because obviously if you don't have uh, a liquid coming off at the uh, top, uh, there's something wrong in between and you can, find, you can uh, find it out. So this is making the best use of your time. Good luck. <clears throat> uh, we uh, want to thank uh, some people for helping us with this. Uh, and this is especially to uh, Steve Childs at Cornell and Abby Vandenberg at uh, Proctor Center uh, at UVM. I also want to thank Tim Perkins at Proctor Center uh, and also Tim Wilmont uh, who now, who used to work for Proctor but now works for D&G. Uh, these have all been very helpful uh, uh, in the preparation of this. Uh, we'll see how successful we are.